Hi, I'm Bill Gentile. And I'm Bruce Jones, and we are the creators of the Video Workshop. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the kind of camera that you use. This is one of the most common questions that we get asked in our video workshops, what kind of cameras do we use? So Bill, tell us a little bit about what you think we should, what, how do you answer this question? You know, there's, there's not really one you know, single answer to the question. Uh, when I go out into the field, I determine what kind of gear I'm going to use. And I'm not a, a gear guy, I'm not an equipment guy. I'm a real practical guy. I, I try to keep everything, you know, a, a downsized to the point that I can put it in my backpack or carry it onto a plane. You know, so I select what I can, what it, what it, what's most appropriate for the field. For example, if I'm going to a place, I was in, 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 um, in Hong Kong earlier this year, and you know, I took with me an HMC 150, not because I was filming a documentary about four Afghan girls who, were, who happened to be in Hong Kong competing in a contest there. The, the HMC 150, which we're using you know, a, a similar camera let's, today. Let's show them. Let's... We use a camera like this, and you know, you've got, you've got a, a couple of, of, of you know, two channels of sound here, we can use that. We have a fairly sophisticated lens. We can attach a wireless microphone to this thing. You've got a, 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 a socket for you know, an, a, another, a, a second a channel of sound. Um, we can plug it into a wall. You, you've got, you've got uh, you know, it's a fairly sophisticated piece of gear. But you know, it, it's also fairly obtrusive. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a fairly big camera and, and people see this camera and, and uh, and, and know that it's a, it, it's a it's a camera of value. It's an item of value. So this um, would kind of this would probably be sort of at the high end of what a, a journalism person would do, or somebody doing a documentary, something like that, would use a camera like this. Exactly. I'll use a camera like this, especially when I, you know, I when I need the luxury of being able to wire people up. I mean, these wireless mics, whether I'm working in Afghanistan or if I'm if I'm working in in Hong Kong or here in Washington D.C., you know, these wireless microphones here. Um, can be can be critical in terms of getting you know usable sound from my characters. Now I was also in, in, in Rwanda this year in Africa working on a documentary about a, a translator who I had worked with way back in the 1990s when I did a story for, for Ted Koppel in, in, in ABC Nightline. And you know I used not a big camera like the one we're using today, but I used this. Use an iPhone. So it's an iPhone. So that's an iPhone. It could also be, I just shot a little piece of this using the iPad, right. so this works fantastic right. also. Right. So. I was in Guatemala uh, 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 a year or so ago, and I used an HD SLR, something you know, a little bit bigger than this, but a lot right. smaller than the big, right. the big Panasonic that we're using today. You know, I use Sony, uh, uh, when I have the, 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 the ability to, I'll take a, a Sony EX1 with me, but it's a big, it's basically a computer right. with right. a lens on it. It's a very expensive camera. But the stuff that comes out of there is just spectacular. So the answer to this question is, it can be the camera that you have in your pocket, like an iPhone, for doing documentary work, doing, you know, if you're working with your nonprofit, you're working with, you know, an interview with somebody, if you want to keep it quiet and keep it small, you can go all the way up to the bigger cameras. You can be something like this. I mean, if you notice, even looking on network news in the morning, you'll see they use all these cameras and they mix them together. Um, it can be even cameras like this, just right. a simple, if it can shoot video, they're all, all of them are almost 100% now shooting HD video. That's right. And the quality is amazing. It's sort of how you get the sound in. The sound is really a, a really important consideration. But as long as you can get good sound in here, the video quality of this is fabulous. The so. sound is, is, the, is, we call it the heartbeat of, of documentary, the kind of films mm -hmm. that I make. I make documentary films, right. and sound is absolutely critical. And you know this is a great piece of equipment, as you say. It's it's high definition. Right. You know the sound is okay. And if you know how this thing functions and you understand its 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 shortcomings, if you understand its limitations, you can get right. effective sound to a certain degree with this. But right. you know nothing takes the place of a wireless microphone. You know that you can you can uh, tape someone having a conversation from a hundred yards away. Right. Really I know important. I've done sometimes when I've shot this. I, the, the mic on this is right here, and it's really common to try to hold this really carefully, and you cover up the mic, and you get back and you go, oh, I just blew it. There are ones that, that plug into here, and they work okay, they work great, and, and it's the right tool for the right job at the right time. But um, You can buy all kinds of things to go with these tools now, all th you know, these, these, these attach-on. Like, like this? Precisely. Right? You can put this either on a tripod, you can put the camera, it just, it just slides, you know, this just sort of slides right in here, holds it, and there you go. Right. You're ready to go. Right. So 
I can put a microphone onto this thing. I can hook a, an eyepiece up to it. It functions almost <laughs> like a Leica, you know. I mean, there are, there are, but you get to a point, I think, of diminishing returns, particularly with the HDSLRs. And that's their primary shortcoming. That's why I really don't like to use them very much because okay. sound is an issue with them, but you can put all these things to attach them. But then you get to a point where, you know, you buy these things in the first place in HDSLR right. because it's compact and, and it's not terribly obtrusive. But when you start putting all these attachments on, pretty soon you have a monster that kind of defeats the purpose. So the, the, the message here is there is a wide variety of cameras. There's no perfect answer to what camera should I use, which is pretty much one of the most common questions that we get asked. Um, it's really what camera works best for the tool, how are you dealing with audio, um, what, do you, what your money is, or where you are in the process. Um, we go more in depth in this into the video workshop course, but it's a, it's, a, it's a wide open subject matter, but the important thing is take whatever you have and get started and start producing yeah. content with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, tools are important, you know, but, but it, it, what's, what's most important for me and what is most important that I teach in these, in these video workshops it's the visual storytelling language. That's, that's, what, that's what we teach in, in, in the workshops. It's the visual storytelling language. You can have, you know, I've seen students generate just terrific content, great stories, great videos with, you know, uh, very, very limited e equipment. And, and I've seen uh, students work with, with, you know, the most sophisticated gear on the planet and come back with, with terrible content. So it's, it's not just the gear, it's important. It's, it's learning how to speak this visual storytelling language, and that's what we teach in the video workshops. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we would love your comments. We love questions. You can leave them down below in the video. If you want to learn more, come on over to uh, the address below, videojournalismworkshops.com. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever it is you're watching, and um, join us on Facebook, and uh, you'll see the addresses. All that will be below, and uh, we'd love to see you. All right, we will see you next time in the next video. I'm Bruce Jones. I'm Bill Gentile. We'll see you next time. Bye Take bye. care. So, uh, you do your name, I'll do my name, and I'll say what it is so you can kind of see where I'm going. So, okay. Hi, I'm Bill Gentile. And I'm Bruce Jones, and welcome to this video. And we, oh, bleh, let me do it. <laughs> do it again. Okay, so start again. Okay. Hi, I'm Bill Gentile. And I'm Bruce Jones, and we are the creators of the video journalism. <laughs> do it so again. Okay. Yeah, do it again. Hi. Done. We're good, man. I, that's good. That's we're good. <laughs>